Well, hey, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Dream Big Podcast with Bob Goff and Friends. I'm your co-host, Scott Schimmel. I'm here with Bob Goff, as always. Hey, everyone. I have had so much fun uh, doing these uh, steps as we have along the Dream Big framework. We've talked about absurd expectations and opportunities and clearing the path and taking action and expecting setbacks, sustaining belief, and we are on... Finally. Land the plane. Fine, let's land this plane. Well, you've spent a few hours on planes in your day. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I've flown in them and I've flown them. And uh, it's easy to take off. Uh, what I found in uh, mm-hmm. aviation is a little bit trickier to land them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need to just kind of get the wheels on the ground if you've uh, come in on a commercial plane into an airport, uh, when you come in and you cross over those white bars and the numbers hmm. that are on there, you'll hear the engine throttle back and they actually cut the power to the engines because what happens is called ground effect. And what happens is the wind comes off the wings, it hits the ground and it pushes up on the wings. Hmm. And so you float about 10 or 15 feet over the runway And at some point, you need to get the plane on the ground. And so what can happen with our ambitions is that we can have uh, identified what they are, made moves in those directions, had a couple setbacks along the way, hung in there. At some point, Mm. you need to get the ambition on the ground. Don't hover 10 feet over your ambitions, like land that thing. And so this will be the section where we bring in some friends to talk about how Mm -hmm. they landed the plane. And I think that's probably the scariest part. I know my wife is afraid of flying. She's a nervous flyer. And for some reason, she had a bad flight back in college, but it's kind of stuck with her. But the only time she's not nervous is when the pilot comes on over the loudspeaker and says, we're about to land. She gets all settled. Okay, we're going. But that's for me, the only time I get nervous, all of a sudden we're like that ground effect. That's when I start to feel, are we going to, we could die. Wait, this is, this could be it. And I think that's what a lot of people feel when it comes to landing the plane of their ambitions, whether it's going public for the first time, launching the website, uh, letting people know you wrote a book, like that's where it gets, am I really going to do this? Yeah. One of the, uh, uh, the things that gives me so much Hope if you know why you're doing what you're doing, you've got this big ambition. Did you know Gene Cernan uh, went to the moon? He walked on the moon. And before he left, the last thing he did is he took a knee and he put his daughter's initials Mm. in the moon dust. They're going to be there forever. I bet that guy for five years leading up to the trip to the moon, he knew the last thing I'm going to do before I leave the moon, I'm putting my daughter's Mm. initials. And Mm. and if you have a big, beautiful, lasting uh, purpose, if you have clarity about why you're doing what you're doing, it'll give you the the extra oomph that you need to land the plane. Mm. You'll do whatever it takes. He'll yeah. take the capsule to the moon. He'll take the limb down. Right. He'll take the walk knowing I'm going to do something lasting here. And we have about 10,000 days here on earth. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few less. <laughs> and so uh, if you know with the period of time that you have left, what's a lasting impact? Not to mm. uh, gain popularity or notoriety, uh, not to just uh, gather affirmation together, but to say, this is a lasting thing mm. that I want to leave behind. Yeah. And it can be your hope, your love, the affection that you have for your kids, the love that you express in a friend. It doesn't need to be like uh, circling the earth in a balloon, which would be terrific. But to know why you're doing what you're doing, mm. that's all part of landing the plane. And then acting with resolve, getting your uh, tires on the ground, not hovering 10 feet Mm -hmm. above that ambition, but actually making it happen. And part of landing the plane is to have a couple ambitions that are uh, not competing with one another, but they're on a parallel Mm -hmm. track. You don't need to just pick one. You can have many things that are moving forward, and then you can find one that where an opportunity is attached to it. That's your opportunity to land the plane. Yeah. That's on that way, just go like, this has been one of 10 ambitions I have. I'm like, I'm in. Yeah, right. Let's go do it. Right. Well, I know I'm not a pilot. You are. 
but there's like a pre-flight checklist. Is there a pre-landing checklist? Are there things you need to do before you're about ready to land? I don't know. So think instead of an airplane, think of a guy that's getting shot out of a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never Which is for- what it feels like. You'll yeah. never forget the first time you got shot out of a cannon. <laughs> but I think we're, we're not kind of like gliding in like a 747. For most of us, it's like we got shot out yeah. of a cannon. So what I would do is I'd put that's your great. helmet on. Uh-huh. Uh, expecting there's going to be a bit of a jolt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> At both ends. <laughs> and, and then uh, aim for the net. Like mm-hmm. literally, you just like, you've got mm-hmm. a landing spot that you've picked. I'd aim for that. When I was learning how to uh, mm-hmm. fly, what they do is they uh, teach you how to actually crash. <laughs> really? <laughs> crash well, it's crazy. Huh. Um, but what you do, it's uh, when they, they'll take you up several thousand feet in the air. Uh, and then they simulate your engine, like just quitting, huh. like going missing. So they throttle it back. And what you do is pitch, pick, and point. Isn't okay. that crazy? Pitch, pick, and point. And I'll tell you what that means. Pitching forward, what you want to do when something like weird happens, yeah. you want to pull back. Okay. Like we're like pull back, but that actually exacerbates the problem Really, because you'll, it'll make you stall out and okay. then you just have no control at all. So pitching forward, huh. leaning into it, wow. landing the plane means pitching forward wow. into this thing saying, okay, pitch, pick, you need to pick where you're going to land because huh. you're just about to get shot out of the cannon. <laughs> yeah. It ain't, it ain't going to be pretty, yeah. but we need to pick a place instead of just kind of like, uh, floating mm. for a while. Pick a place where yeah. you're going to aim to land, yeah. and then finally point at it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> pitch, pick, and point. Go do so it. So I would say, when it comes to landing your ambition, I would say, uh, like, lean into this thing. Mm. Take action. Write the letter. Make the call. Uh, let everybody know what your ambition is, uh, hoping that if you tell enough people about your ambition, they'll go like, "Oh, I know this person, and their ambition was to mm-hmm. whatever it was." And yeah. so, and then. As you pitch in towards that thing, leaning towards that thing, to find out every opportunity mm-hmm. you can uh, to pick a place to start. Yeah. Like, don't just say, generally, I want to lead a happy life. Say, like, tr- drill down and say, what's happy? Mm-hmm. Uh, does that mean make a million dollars? Does that mean give a million dollars away? Does that mean buy a puppy? Uh, whatever it means for you. Uh, feed a million people. Wh- whatever mm-hmm. it is, you pick your thing. Um, yep. And then, point towards it with everything you've got landing the plane doesn't happen yeah. by happenstance right the guys in the cockpit yeah. are doing rock paper scissors yeah. <laughs> they what they do is they're pointing towards a runway mm-hmm. they cross the numbers they cut they they, they do need to do whatever yeah. they need to do to get that plane on the ground yeah same thing for us and our, our ambitions well i was taking notes you're saying that so kind of looking at i'm about to land the plane let me take a step back you've been saying this many times throughout this entire podcast series what's my purpose why am i doing what i'm doing like to actually take the time to say that again out loud to write that down again why am i doing this what is my purpose you're talking about now about where am i going what's the focus what am i picking and I think also there's good questions in there about what if I'm successful? What if this works? What if this, what if I solve this problem? What if a million people get clean water? And on the flip side, what if I don't? I think that has a way of, if, what if I don't do this? What if I'm not successful? What if I don't try? What if I don't land this plane? Yeah. If you knew in advance that it wasn't going to work, would you do it anyway? Yeah. If you had something that, uh, that caused you to say, you know what, even if it didn't work, I would fail trying at that. Mm. Um, if it's a conflict overseas, you don't just have to leave it to the UN to have all the fun. Hmm. Um, you could pick a conflict. You could pick a conflict across the street. You could pick a conflict in your family. You could pick something, but to say, what is my role in that conflict? Mm -hmm. Do I want to have the louder voice? Mm -hmm. Do I want to have the truer voice? Yeah. Say like, I actually want to be, have the calmer voice. Mm -hmm. I want to be a calming influence. I don't want to like throw gasoline on this thing. Uh, What I want to do is have people uh, understand why they're doing what they're doing mm-hmm. and then go do a lot of that, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. without telling people, this is how I need to, uh, you need to do that, uh, yeah. because that's called manipulation. Uh-huh. And so people uh, that you've experienced and that I've experienced that try to manipulate you, they'll mm-hmm. manipulate you using any source. They can use shame to manipulate mm-hmm. you. They can use guilt to manipulate you. And they're not trying to keep you down. They're just insecure. Right. If you're 
clear on why you're doing what you're doing, you're going to be less subject to manipulation mm -hmm. along the way. And you'll see mm -hmm. other people that are insecure or raising their voice to you. And you just don't need to engage that because mm -hmm. it's a decision that you made. In order for me to land the plane, I can't be flying everybody else's plane. Mm -hmm. I need to actually land mine yeah. uh, instead of uh, co-piloting everybody else's. Right. And so that idea of keeping your eyes on your own paper, mm -hmm. I don't need to shepherd everybody else's ambitions yeah. as they go forward, even if somebody makes a misstep. Yet, I can mm -hmm. be somebody that's available to yeah. be compassionate and to be helpful, yeah. um, to say, not make suggestions like wear your seatbelt, mm -hmm. um, right. because I don't feel like that's my role. Right. There's plenty of people saying that. Right. Uh, my role would be to say, is that, a, uh, is that an ambition worthy of the uh, distance that you'll travel mm -hmm. to get there? Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's uh, if it is, they go like, well, then go for it, man. Right. How can I be helpful? Right. Yeah. I know everyone sees you as based on what you've done in the world. Like you're bold, you're courageous. I, I, I would say fearless. When I look at you, you look fearless. But has there been a time where you look at I'm um, going down this path and, and you're maybe more hesitant more nervous than other times? Yes, hapless is the word that hapless. comes to mind <laughs> more often. <laughs> Blissfully ignorant. Blissfully, yeah, so Say, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right. So uh, that would be a skill set to actually, uh, on purpose, mm -hmm. turn down the, the volume on all of the reasons why not to do it, uh, not be paralyzed by all the things that could go wrong, mm -hmm. all the <laughs> months you could be detained, yeah. um, all of the things that could go awry, uh, yet being wise enough to anticipate those things and to steer forward with this kind of uh, planned spontaneity, that it comes across as very spontaneous, but underneath mm -hmm. a veneer of spontaneity is a ton of planning. Mm -hmm. That you can land the plane by going to some places that uh, are in a conflict, but also having a way out. There actually is this service you can get uh, where they will land a helicopter on the top of any building anywhere on earth what? and get you. Is really? that crazy? Yeah, so on the uh, Planet Spot in 80, you could be like, yeah, well, we're gonna go to this place. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but I've actually got the phone number. Worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I can just, you're not calling it a strike, forward. you're just saying, come can you, get me out of here like right now. <laughs> so that would be something where you would plan along the way, but not be paralyzed by all the things that <laughs> might go wrong, but mm -hmm. to have an overriding ambition, something you want so bad. Mm. Uh, I remember meeting sweet Maria Goff. She mm -hmm. wasn't sweet Maria Goff at the time, yeah. but I would have done whatever. I would have jumped out of a moving car mm. uh, just to like connect with her. Um, and, uh, and so when you want something, whether it's a relationship, a job, uh, an opportunity really mm -hmm. bad, you'll do what it takes to get there. Yeah. Landing the plane is knowing what you want, mm -hmm. kind of vetting it to say, is this really worth all the effort that it's going to take to get there? And once you've concluded that it will, then just be uh, like uh, unconsolable when mm. it comes to all the reasons why it isn't going to happen to say like, I'm actually going to be, I'm so intent on right. uh, this ambition that I'm not going to take all the reasons uh, as mm. uh, reasons not to do it. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, the person that uh, runs track doesn't see the hurdles as impediments. He sees them as ways to get there. Mm. Yep. That's the way to get yep. to the end of the race is to jump over the, all the hurdles along the way. And so yep. you're not surprised by those who go like, well, yeah, I would actually be surprised right. there aren't more. As we go to this last month of the podcast, we're going to have some great conversations with friends of yours, but w what do you want to say to somebody that's been tracking this whole time and they've been doing their homework and they've been clearing the path and they've been getting to work and they've had some setbacks. Like now it's time to really get serious about this. And yeah, I would say, item. I would say this, stop preparing and be ready. Yeah. yeah, because I think there's a uh, there's a, a seeming uh, safety to preparing. I'm preparing. I'm preparing. I'm preparing. I'm packing. I'm packing. I'm packing. Mm -hmm. At some point, you need to go to the uh, airport and, and yeah. make a trip. Yeah, you need to actually be ready when the opportunity for your ambition to get wheels uh, goes. Like then go pitch, mm -hmm. pick, and point. Yeah, lean into that thing, pick your landing thing, where you're going, and mm -hmm. point at it. Yeah. And, and you know what? If it's a big, beautiful 
ambition that you've had for years and years. Don't be easily taken off the scent. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to run up a couple obstacles. You'll run up against a couple people that you might admire a lot that thinks that's a stupid idea. Yep. I don't know uh, how much weight I would give that. Give it the appropriate amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that if they're really wise people in your life, then you might give that a little bit more. And if they're uh, not, then I'd mm -hmm. give it a little bit less. But uh, I, I wouldn't be so easily taken off the scent. You've got a big, beautiful ambition. God has put you here on earth right now. Yeah. Uh, your ambitions will change because you will change. That's how it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. But uh, know that I'm moving in this direction. I want to land the plane on these things. I'm not going to just live a life hovering yeah. 10 feet above my ambitions without actually going. So yeah. if you need to quit your job, because you've always wanted to go to grad school, hmm. quit your job. Yeah, there it is. Give me a call. I'll call your boss and quit for <laughs> you. Um, whatever it takes to say, I'm going to, the thing that's getting in the way for me is uh, this uh, a terrific career that I have. Well, if it's that terrific, don't be stupid and quit it if yep. this is your ambition. But if it's just terrific because it's, um, it's serving a bunch of purposes that aren't your purposes, right. then it isn't actually in the final analysis right. a terrific job. It might be a terrific job for somebody else. It's just not <laughs> terrific for you anymore. That's the next feature on season two of the podcast. Bob calls your boss and breaks up with them. Yes, we <laughs> could do that. Yeah. Here's like a five seconds, yeah. of, uh, five <laughs> seconds of total disruption. But there's something really freeing about that when mm -hmm. I've had whether it was a relationship and somebody said, you know, I don't care for you as much as you care for me. Or if it's a, uh, if it's a job that you got fired from that you'd really wanted, if it's a, some uh, hope that you'd had and you'd put all this effort into it, it didn't work. Don't bail on your ambitions. Yeah. I'd either redouble your resolve to mm -hmm. know these are actually things that are worth pursuing right. in a non creepy way. Right. Um, but I'm just going to stay after them mm. or you'll find some new ambitions mm -hmm. where you actually have an opportunity. Right. Like if it's the right. relationship, they you'll know because they actually said yes when you said yes. you want to go yep. out for a burger. Yep. Um, uh, if you keep saying uh, no to yourself, what's that be, uh, wonderful quote by Wayne Gretzky, the famous hockey, you miss 100% right. of the shots you don't take. It's Michael Jordan. Oh, are you yeah, serious? Yeah. I thought it was Gretzky. I think he's more past the puck to where you know the guy's going to be. That's okay. the Gretzky quote. Okay, pucks. Back. Right. Totally. I don't know anything about sports. <laughs> <laughs> but you know where we're going at. Yeah. You you just go for it. Fail trying. And yeah. landing the plane means leaning in towards this ambition that you have. Mm -hmm. Picking a direction that you're going and then pointing at that direction with everything you've got. So if you look to Bob like I do as a guide, as a coach, you heard what he said. Stop preparing and be ready. For all the planning that you've been doing through this Dream Big framework, it's finally time to land the plane. And we know for many people, this is the hardest part. It takes the most courage because you're going public with this very important big dream that you have. So we put together a workbook to help you land the plane to your big ambitions. It's easy to download. It's in the show notes. So go and download that, grab a cup of coffee and a journal, and get to work to make a plan to land the plane. This month, we have two Dream Big Live workshops, one in October 11th through 14th at Onsite in Nashville, later in the month in Atlanta, October 22nd and 23rd, and there's two more coming this year. Everybody's coming to Bob's hometown November 11th and 12th in San Diego, and finally, December 2nd through 4th, we're going to Hawaii, Dream Big Live workshop in Hawaii. All the details you need about those workshops and how to sign up are on the website, dreambigframework.com.